It's now August 2023, and last week, a systematic review by Canterbury Christchurch University, published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine, concluded isometric exercises are most effective for lowering blood pressure. So let's look at this in more detail. Hi everyone, and welcome to Exercise for Health. And today I will explain new evidence for isometric exercise to help lower blood pressure. Now I will be honest, since I did my exercise referral training back in 1997, when I qualified to prescribe exercise to people living with health conditions, I can distinctly remember isometric exercises being a no-no for people with hypertension due to a spike in the diastolic blood pressure while performing them, placing an increased risk upon the heart. This made medical and sports medicine associations reluctant to endorse isometric exercise in the same way as dynamic exercise. So when I heard this news last week, I was initially skeptical. However, having read the review, I'm somewhat excited to share this information and it will enable me to provide additional routines and workouts incorporating isometric exercises on this channel. If you're not sure what isometric exercises are, then let me briefly explain. The skeletal muscles in the body can be considered in three states. Relaxed, stretched, or contracted. Then there are two types of contractions against a resistance. They are an isotonic contraction, which is dynamic. This can be in the form of a concentric contraction where the muscle is shortening under load, like lifting a weight during a bicep curl exercise or it can be an eccentric contraction when the muscle is lengthening under tension, like lowering a weight during a bicep curl exercise. The other type is an isometric contraction, which is static. This is where the muscle doesn't move under the load, like holding a position that challenges the muscle without moving it. An example of an everyday activity would be carrying or holding an object that isometrically contracts the bicep muscle in the upper arm. You can pretty much adapt any movement to make it isometric by pausing at a point within it where the muscle is still under tension and the intensity can be adjusted by changing the load placed upon the muscle. However, in the exercise world, typical isometric examples would be the plank, a wall sit, a V sit, a reverse plank or tabletop, a static split squat, a glute bridge hold, or you can be creative using weights or other equipment that you have, ensuring the body part remains static while under a load. Isometric exercises have generally been considered optimum for the initial stages of muscle rehabilitation following an injury or surgery, and also used as a form of stretching known as PNF for improved flexibility, but little was known about the effects of isometric exercises on people with chronic diseases. So let's look at the results of the evidence in more detail and break down the findings. The study, which I'll leave a link to in the description below, collected evidence from 270 random controlled trials that sampled nearly 16,000 participants. They obtained rest in blood pressure results from exercise interventions lasting at least two weeks of either dynamic resistance training, which could include any type of weight training or weight lifting, aerobic or cardio training, which is of a moderate intensity to considerably elevate the heart rate, combined training, which mixed dynamic resistance training with cardio training, like I've done in my previous workout videos to reduce blood pressure, isometric training, which we've just discussed, or high intensity interval training, also known as HIT that provides short bouts of very hard exercise mixed with periods of rest. I've plotted the results in this table and placed them in order of their effectiveness. You can see in the table the changes for the participants rest in blood pressure, for the systolic reading or higher top figure of blood pressure reading measured in millimeters of mercury, the diastolic reading or lower bottom figure of a blood pressure reading also measured in millimeters of mercury, and then the overall effectiveness as a percentage for that method of training to reduce one's resting blood pressure. Although all methods of exercise observed a drop in blood pressure, you can see how effective isometric exercises are from these results, showing over 98% of participants recording a drop in their resting blood pressure. 
but it's worth pointing out that just performing isometric exercises alone wouldn't be considered best practice for overall health and fitness. Although they are best for lowering blood pressure in the long term, using them to supplement other forms of training would be recommended to provide a well-balanced program for all other health benefits, including cardiovascular health. But for people that may find doing a full holistic workout daunting, starting with some simple isometric exercises for 10 to 15 minutes a day may be a good start point. A caveat that's worth pointing out is that the review only shows the effectiveness of isometric exercise as a long-term solution for managing resting blood pressure, but it doesn't highlight the potential risk placed upon the individual while performing them. Although it's not likely to be any worse than dynamic resistance training in healthy populations, there aren't many studies that can show the risks to people with chronic health conditions, and I'll leave links in the description below to another two studies from 2020 and 2022 that discusses this in more detail. Furthermore, isometric exercises that only isolate a small muscle group will also be of a higher risk compared to those utilizing multiple muscle groups due to the elevated rate pressure product as a result of the increased peripheral resistance, which basically means it will place more stress back on the heart. Therefore, if you have a heart condition or other comorbidity that can affect the heart, isometric exercises may not be advisable due to a risk to your cardiovascular health while performing them. For most people though, just having raised blood pressure alone that's classified in one of the two categories shown on screen now, indicated by a green arrow marker, and that don't have any other health issues, isometric exercises can be safely added into your weekly routine as an effective way for reducing your blood pressure in the long term. If your rest and blood pressure is classified as stage two hypertension, indicated with the orange arrow marker, then isometric exercises may also be safe, but it's worth checking with your doctor first to make sure it's okay for you. If your blood pressure at rest is in the severe category, indicated by a red cross, then any method of moderate to vigorous exercise, irrelevant of the type, would be considered contraindicated, meaning that the risk to your health outweighs the potential benefit, and it would be wise to get your blood pressure under control before embarking on any exercise routine. One final note of advice if you're starting to use isometric exercises into your regime is to please ensure you breathe normally during the exercise and that you don't perform the Valsalva maneuver. This is straining by stopping yourself from breathing, which is easy to do when you're contracting muscles statically, as this can increase the spike in the blood pressure response. Following news of this comprehensive review, I've already started to plan a third workout video to help reduce blood pressure which will include some isometric exercises to help those of you that would like this as an option. I hope the information in this video has got you excited about being able to use other forms of exercise to manage your blood pressure. If so, please give it a like by clicking the thumbs up button below and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But thank you so much for watching and remember to stay active and keep moving to feel better. E